Saturday, 3, 12 a.m. Message 4. Do you believe in reincarnation, Mr. Boyd? I am that rabbit that you killed six months ago, Mr. Boyd. You dirty, filthy cunt. Well, we have been listening to um, recordings of uh, the answer phone from some people who, um, I don't know what to say about them. They, uh, they seem to be upset by my eating roadkill. This is Bodmin Moor, a lonely stretch of Cornish moorland with a small, mostly male population. I decided to spend four weeks here to find out about life on the moor and in particular what kind of effect such isolation has on the men who live here. The first person I met was a man who's become notorious for his eccentric diet. Arthur is a retired civil servant from Watford who moved here several years ago with his wife. The trouble is I've now got badger on my hands. It's going all over my wife's steering wheel. Will she smell the difference? Let's hope not. Does she, does she like eating badger? No, she's a vegetarian. Come along with me, young man. <clears throat> so a little bit of a squeeze through here. This is my freezer, all full of badger and lovely things. Pheasant, A30. A30 is a good road for stuff. Here's badger legs, hedgehog, ox, squirrel, Dog. Here's a rabbit. This is an otter. That's a barn owl. Very nutritious. I've got stuff in here which has been here for quite a while. Oh, there's some rather green badger. Look at that. That's that's 30-day-old badger, and it has begun to go a little bit. That's the, the fat has got a tinge of green to it, but that'll taste very nice. A nice. Nice cock pheasant. Cat likes playing with them. No, don't walk away. Have you eaten cats? Don't walk away. I have eaten cats, yes. Quite a few. Yeah, but not for many years now. A little bit of face brushing, eh? of fat on this badger. If you can afford to eat meat from the supermarket, well, you're welcome to do it. But I would suggest that you are buying there a lot that you are not sure about rather than uh, something like this, which is natural. It hasn't been interfered with by humans. It is a, a very organic piece of meat. In fact, a lot of meat. My dear wife, Sue, she's very particular. <laughs> If I've been making a smell of badger and she's been in a, a, a mood about it, 
she'll go up to her bedroom to have her dinner. All right, dear. OK. And I'll eat mine in front of the television. We compromise. Arthur and his wife had been plagued by nuisance calls for over nine months. The caller often pretended to be the ghost of an animal Arthur had eaten. Message five. I realize that your gutter has started leaking. You soon your tap, but it won't start dripping. You'll have to call a plumber. Next thing you know, your car will get a puncture. Yeah, you, Mr. Boyd. That's me, Mr. Boyd. I'm getting you back. Bit by bit. Getting you back for killing me. <laughs> So you don't think it's anyone you know? It's no, it's no one I know. Mm. No. These come from people who are stimulated by the bizarre nature of what I'm doing and feel that they've got to get themselves in touch with it in an equally bizarre sort of way. It doesn't worry me, but it does worry my wife. In my second week on the moor, I got a call from Arthur. For his wife's sake, he'd agreed to meet a private investigator to try to put a stop to the nuisance calls. That's better. Come in! Good you don't have to knock, you Arthur. just push your way in. You're very kind. How are you? All right, thank you, Barry. Here we are. Oh, that's nice and warm, isn't it? Hi there. Yeah, good morning to you. Good morning. Got another message. You I think they'll listen to this. And one. It'll have to play it first message. anyway. It doesn't worry me in no. the least, but it does worry my wife. Of course, it um, yeah. I, I am afraid I view it as humour. Have you thought about changing your phone number? But I don't want to change. You don't my want to change. No, number. that's fair enough. You shouldn't have to. I have I too many mean. people who know, know my number. Yeah, that's right. That's um, the thing. Yeah. Mm. You, you, you can't think of anyone. You've never. Had confrontation with anyone in in the past or anything like that? You know, oh, I've had confrontation. I'm afraid with, <laughs> with quite a few. People, I do. You know. Not anyone. That but there's no one that would, you know, they no. may no. No, so there's no one that I can think of. No. I spoke to the police. Oh, yeah. Um, have they listened to the tapes? No. Right. I've got to make a few discreet inquiries to see if I can make a connection somewhere. You never know the person who's making the phone calls may live locally. For all we know, someone could have been down into their backyard. You don't know, do you? Things can happen down here. I mean, say, bodies can disappear on Bodmin Moor any time. Body could be disposed over there and you would never know. You don't want to say too much because his, his wife would want him to move. You could really frighten her and say, you're so isolated down there. A tough one. I decided to spend some more time at Arthur's in the hope of meeting his wife. Whoa! <laughs> God, did that give you some good footage? Let's do the big one. Is that your wife, Arthur? That is! The good lady has arrived. She's gone into hiding. Right. I got the impression that Arthur's wife wouldn't come out of hiding while I was around. So what is it she like? 
appearing on this film, do you think? Uh, oh, I don't wife? know. You're, you're asking me uh, personal questions about the one I love. She has chosen, she has exercised her, her human right not to be televised and gawped at by the, um, by the television watching, um, masses. I say I'm getting this nice and clean with a bit of luck. We'll get rid of this smell of badger. Pansy! Pansy, Pansy! Would you eat your wife's cat if it died? No. <laughs> I'm in trouble enough without eating her cat. <laughs> in fact, we had one died, and it, it is buried out there. I haven't even dug it up to get its bones. But its bones are interesting because it only had three legs. Do you think you're difficult to live with? Um, at times, possibly. No, <laughs> not me. <laughs> In my last week on Bodmin Moor, I went to see Arthur again. He was now receiving nuisance calls from a number of different people. Message five. You're a shit. All I read was well is in the area, Mr. Boyd. <laughs> the detective had decided it wasn't possible to chase up every nuisance caller, so he closed the case. You can't stop people thinking what they want to about what other people's lifestyle is and what they do, you know. Um, We've made inquiries, and clearly there is a, a majority of people who, who dislike his lifestyle of roadkill. Message six. It's off there. So fucking must be to that come. <laughs> oh, fuck. You ain't my puppy. Puppy sucker. Arthur seems to be able to take it on board and deal with it in his own way. You dirty. <laughs> End of message. You, you'll get more calls. I, I can't see them ending. <laughs>